Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we will be doing an unboxing of Core Space Firstborn, the sci fi miniatures game. This is a sequel, sort of, to the original Core Space game, which was primarily a uh, competitive, you know, team kind of game. You could play it uh, with some modifications in solo, but it was really a race one team against the other. Uh, this is a standalone game, and it's designed from the start to be. Uh, cooperative, which then thus means it's also solo friendly. So uh, it's a big box, you see here, big heavy box. And we are going to check out everything that you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. <laughs> Okie doke. So as I mentioned, uh, this is related to the previous Battle Systems game, Core Space, which I did do an unboxing on a couple years ago, as well as a playthrough. Uh, if you want to check out the channel and watch that, I do hope to do a playthrough of this one as well. Um, and we will uh, we'll get that up on the channel a little bit later on. So let's pull this apart here. It's a big, like I showed you, it's a big deep box. Interesting to see how this has changed. Um, from the first printing. So you're still apparently playing traitors, but you are, um, you know, it's more of a mission-based kind of game now, instead of just uh, going out and uh, uh, just trying to get as much loot as you can before you get caught. So we have a desiccant pack, put that aside. All right, first thing we got here is the uh, neoprene mat which is the backdrop for all these scenarios. Uh, very cool, very cool artwork. It's pre-gridded um, for your movement, although you can use, uh, you normally use range rulers, but you can, you can convert it and play with a grid system, so that's there. It also helps you with setting up the, uh, uh, the terrain, but everything will be played on this mat, which is only a two foot by two foot mat, so it doesn't take up a lot of stable space, which is really, really nice. You can play a whole uh, miniatures, uh, kind of RPG-esque game. I'm gonna put that off to the side. So it looks like we had some shipping issues here, a little explosion that went on here in the in the game, in the uh, inside, you know, the silicon pack. So we have some bags, little loose bags. There's probably more in here. We've got a draw pouch. This is gonna be for the various loot that you're gonna be be finding in chests and things like that and you will draw from this so it's nice to give you a printed bag and now we've got some I'll just up here so we've got some cardboard which is going to assemble to be your insert so it ships with the insert kind of unassembled and this will help you for organizing down in the bottom of the box so in standard style you've got the long pieces and the short pieces, and they'll go and create a grid that you can use to put your materials in. And you gotta be careful because you wanna make sure your these notches go together because they're gonna hold your range ruler later when we get to that. And then the same thing with the notches on the big piece, you wanna get them, get those lined up as well. So I didn't intend to do any kind of assembly here on the video, but since it was already kind of coming apart, as it were, we'll go ahead and knock that out. And then it's just a simple, you know, divider, but that'll go down here, down low in the bottom of the box to hold these different components. All right, so it's debris now. All right, so now we've got our range rulers and shot rulers, we've got a short one and a long one. These are, these are nice. Uh, the previous one I think was made out of cardboard and these are kind of a clear uh, lucite plexiglass, uh, kind of similar to um, some of the ones made by Litco for X-Wing. So they're about eight eighth of an inch thick. Uh, but then you can see through them so when you're putting them down you can still kind of get, instead of covering up everything you can still kind of see what you're measuring, and they are notched. I don't know if you can see this or not with this background. 
that they are um, they're marked in terms of inches. You can see it there. So they got the little markings on them to sub further subdivide the ruler. So that's a nice touch. All right, and then we've got. Let's see. We've got the rules here. We've got a learned playbook. That's good. So it's a 16-page rule book guiding you into the system, telling what you're going to get with the punch board and the uh, the miniatures that you've got. So we've got the crew of the Eidolon. Uh, I believe this is fully compatible with previous crews that you, you might have had uh, for the old core space, or if you can pick some of those expansions up, you'll be able to use this. There's something called Game Hunters, and they are uh, probably NPCs. And then we've got the Firstborn. Uh, so we've got Iconoclast, Lieges, Drones, Trueborn. Crew dashboards, I don't go everything in here. But anyway, so you got your component um, manifest here. You've got the terrain assembly guide, how to make it, how to put them together. The, 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 the punch board terrain that uh, Battle Systems does is really, really high quality. It's designed that the walls and stuff can come down, but some of these set pieces you know, will go together and will stay together in the box. That's why that uh, divider was there for you. So it's pretty cool. So this tells you about the dashboards, how to set up the mission, how to lay it out on your two by two grid, searchable terrain. Yeah, the range, they're range rulers that we saw. And how to go through a round. It's kind of a, a, a playthrough. Um, like a playbook it tells you how to get through it. A sample of play, is I guess what I'm trying to say there. In not good English. All right, so 16 page, read this first, how to play guide. And then we've got a nice, perfect bound, core space firstborn rule book by Battle Systems, also in full color. This is a much larger book. It's all over, over 100 pages. Looks like we're looking at 112 or so. And it is a, it's got all your missions, it's got your full rules, the different phases of the game, how to set it up, equipment, determining line of sight, icons, pretty neat. Campaign, how to play a campaign, you can play, you can play one-off missions, you can play campaigns. Uh, the game hunters, uh, even the apex predator rockworms, aren't at the top of the food chain. If there's money to be made, there are people who will exploit anything and everything. Game hunters are traders with a very particular set of skills. They specialize in hunting beasts, a character type that includes rockworms and extracting teeth, bones, glands, or anything else with black market value. When using the game hunters, you should shuffle the cards marked with the game hunter icon into the event deck. Like rockworms, game hunters arrive when prompted by an event card. So then here's some of the missions. Repair the reactor. Memory tech. Bring them back alive. Very nice artwork. I mean, the painted miniatures here are nice too, but uh, the sketch artwork, very, very cool. Dark proprietor of Trading Post 5. All right, so you get that nice rule book. Let's keep going, a lot of goodness here in this box. All right, and speaking of which, we have a box in a box. And this will probably be our miniatures. So let's see how the best open this. Probably like that. So again, there's the artwork. And we've got a tray here, and there's all, all the miniatures. Set that aside. I don't know if I'm going to ever get this back in the box as is. So here we've got the, uh, the rock worms, and they're pretty cool. And then the gray characters are the crew, your crew, that you'll be playing with if you just have the base game, the Eidolon. And then the um, firstborn. Kind of shift it out of their section. Let's get a picture. We've got some flying 
I don't know if these are critters or robots. They look like robots because of the way they're jointed. So that's pretty neat. So we got three of those. We got a couple here that have come off their stands. There's five of those. And I like how they stay in the box on their stands well. This one doesn't want to stay on its stand. So I may have to do a little bit of glue on that one. Quick look, take a close up look here at the miniatures. Get the rock worm. Stand up for us. Smile for the camera. Let's so get two of those. You got all these firstborn, and then here's your ship's crew. And a little disappointing that those that those fell off the stands and don't seem to want to just snap right back on. So probably, like I said, I'll have to glue those. All right, so in addition to that, we've got uh, pegs for tracking on the character boards. We'll go over those in a minute. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of peg tracking you're gonna do. So we've got the, the uh, gold ones, and we've got a bag of black plastic pegs. And then we've got some orange, green, purple. We've got our dice. These are our custom six-sided die. We've got five, four red, one purple, a green, and a yellow. I mean, a blue with yellow. Right. We will all have special purposes. So that's what's in the miniature box. In, that's what's in the miniatures box, and you also got, like I said, these these uh, um, plastic components, the dice and the pegs, and then also you got extra space for storage that's already built into this. So, that's it. all right, I guess we'll go down to the punch board first. So I call them set pieces, but they're really scattered terrain and they tell you what the different pieces are now. So these punch out pretty cleanly. And so this is a wall and the door comes out and you can leave it, you can push the door back in. So the door's closed when the mission starts and you can't fire through it. Um, or then you, you know, punch open the door and then you can get a line of sight through there if you can see through it, so on and so forth. Um, and they seem to be more of a cardstock. Well, I thought they were a little more coated before, but they still seem very, very durable. Um, so you, and, they're, and they're pretty much the same size, or, or of two sizes, like half and full. And so, you know, they'll stack neatly inside the box. Um, and then you've got decorative, uh, decorative pieces. And then there's some clips that will go in this, these slits. So you can see them here. Well, they're double sided, so you can't. Um, you see those little notches there. So then you'll join them with these plastic clips that will allow you to do right angles, or, you know, straight connectors, or uh, you know, 45 degree angles if you need to. So it's pretty cool. So they go together to form your whole map. So let's see. It looks like you have about eight sheets of these, uh, nine, ten. So we'll look at them real quick. There's the one we've punched a few out of. And some of them are duplicates. But all very eerie looking as if uh, some alien species has taken over whatever your mission is on. Now we've got some of the uh, scattered terrain. We've got you know, these growths that you don't want to touch. Kind of like the upside down and Stranger Things um, pillars, hatches. There's hatch counters that will go onto the onto the board, so you know where is the hatch can be accessed. And we've got exhaust vents with flames, stairs or stasis pods. Very cool. Get two of those. Looks like they're pretty much the same. 
And then these are your player. Now these are, that's where I was getting confused. These are, are kind of a matte finish. These are very glossy because they're gonna get a lot more wear and tear because these are your character sheets, your character uh, stat cards that you're gonna use, uh, their roles. So, a, so Cassie may be a Marine or she may be a machine or she may be a hunter. So on and so forth. So you'll, you'll match these up, although I don't think she'd be a machine. That would be Hopper. No, excuse me. Let me take it back. Uh, Hopper is a machine. As it says, speaking of the upside down, we got Hopper. And then some tracking, and then a lot of uh, equipment discs that you'll, or tokens that you will draw from and explore as you open up chests and things like that. And another sheet of equipment. And then your enemy, uh, the firstborn tracker sheets. Here's your hunters, your big game hunters. Uh, and then we'll punch this one here. This is for your hostility tracker. And this has a special purpose because it's plastic coated too. It, it comes out a little bit harder once you get it, it's fine. And then finally, we've got some more here. We got the stasis pods, rockworm counters, a Dyson reactor, which will get assembled. Uh, I think we saw that in the rule book. And that's pretty cool. All right, and then this here, in this container, we got some tape on here. Get rid of. All right. So this is your, um, status tracker and then what you're going to do is this is going to go and pop into here depending on which level you're playing at and the book will tell you which one's which you've got two two-sided and so that'll slide into this here pops in place and then using one of your pegs you will you will move up and down the uh, threat the threat board and this will tell you which which of the enemies are going to uh, attack and what they're going to do uh, throughout the game. So as, as things, uh, as the threat increase, the hostility increases, the threat gets worse. So it's a pretty neat little system. And then you got four of the character tracker. These are very hard plastic character tracker boards. Um, so they will have those um, character cards that we saw earlier. So let's say a little bit Balcor here. And Balcor's counter will go in there. And then let's just say he was a Marine. Then his role goes in here. And then this should be his different equipment. Let's track his equipment and then his points will be tracked. Uh, his uh, health, skills, career, so ammo. Um, will be tracked in these with pegs in these holes. So you get four of those, one for each of your crew members. And everything fits together really neatly. And then finally, we have, well, I think it's finally, let's see, we got a deck of cards in here. Yeah. So we do have those plastic connectors that I was telling you about. You got straight ones, you got T ones, you got uh, intersections, you got angles. So you got bag, two bags of those. And then you've got cards, which will help you determine the AI actions as well as describe some of the uh, uh, special terrain features or um, uh, what some of the uh, larger items in the game might do. This, the things I called set pieces, like like here's the uh, like the exhaust fan gives you the rules. So it's a reference card, command console, arc, stasis pod, Dyson reactor. So what, what that's going to do. And then the stat cards, there's the rock worm. It tells you what his attack and defense is and his range and how he behaves. How game hunters behave. And then we have event cards, a deck of event cards that will come into play each round. You'll draw an event card and then whatever happens, happens. So worm food, patrol, cleansed. If you're from patrol to cleanse on the threat meter. You'll, uh, 
on a threat meter, you'll see we've got patrol to cleanse. So tremors of any rockworms are in play, they immediately retreat back into their holes to find a better meal. Remove them from play. Place this card face up on top of the event deck. Instead of drawing a new card in the next hostility fades, discard this one. Two rockworms then arrive at random wormholes. So, you know, dynamic events that will and they'll tell you, I believe, in the mission which events can possibly happen. So if there's no rockworms in the in the in the mission. You're not going to have the rockworm events, things like that. And they go by the little uh, the icons there. Will tell you what you're adding. So lots of event cards. And I believe that is it. We've dug to the bottom of the box. So uh, I'll just show you real quick because we'll go play with it a little bit. This is going to go. Down here, because when you punch out the punch board, the punch board's not going to go in there anymore. So, um, if you pick up a copy of Core Space Firstborn by Battle Systems, you're going to get a lot of stuff that I don't know how it's going to get back in the box, but we'll uh, we'll give it a shot here, maybe. Um, so, like like that uh, tracker. No, excuse me, that's not the tracker. The tracker goes there, and it's. Designated slot. This is for the range rulers, I do believe. And then your different terrains that you pre-assemble will go into here. And yeah, so if you pick up a copy of Core Space Firstborn, the sci-fi miniatures game from Battle Systems, you are going to get all of this good stuff. You're going to get the box of miniatures. I'm not gonna try to put it back in. You're gonna get the box of miniatures, you're gonna get the plastic pegs and, and custom dice, the plastic range tracker, and character sheets, character character boards, the plastic uh, uh, joiners for the terrain, the status tracker, the event card deck, and the reference deck. You're going to get 10 sheets of punch outs, including your, all your terrain and your character reference cards. We'll throw that in there. And there's some terrain, and you're going to get a draw bag for your equipment that you find. You're going to get the 100 plus page rule book, the 16 page learn to play, and you're going to get the range rulers, a couple of baggies for good measure and the neoprene 2x2 two two game mat for playing your missions on. And that is everything that comes in Core Space and will eventually get back in this box. Core Space Firstborn, salvage, trade, adopt, and survive from Battle Systems. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you, bye-bye. Oh!